Hello, my dear learners. <clears throat> Welcome to this series of lessons. Uh, if you remember when we began our lessons, we discussed about what we call types of energies. And the different types of energies that we discussed those days were light energy, we discussed about heat energy, we wrote sound energy, we wrote electrical energy, we wrote magnetic energy and many others. So previously we have been looking on light energy and we have seen different properties of uh, light on different shapes, on different mirrors, on uh, lenses. Now we are moving a step ahead to the second type of energy which is electrical energy. To begin with, <coughs> I believe you know what is electricity and you people use electricity at home to run different devices of it. Now, what do we really mean by what we call electrical energy? Electrical energy is an energy or is a form of energy that involves what we call the flow of electrons. It involves the flow of electrons and these electrons they move <clears throat> they flow in what we call a good conductor of electricity when we say a good conductor of electricity if you can refer back to grade 4 when you discussed about electrical energy I know you are given different examples of good conductor of electricity like metal like any liquid we have human body we have uh, uh, plants that are wet, all those things, they do what? They allow the flow of electricity. But the opposite of good conductors of electricity is bad conductors of electricity, which are also known as what? Insulators. Insulator. An insulator is a bad conductor. Is a bad conductor. The rings which do not allow the flow of electricity or the flow of electrons. For example, we have plastic, we have a piece of cloth, we have paper, we have dry wood, and many more, and many more. Now, uh, this form of energy, that is electrical energy, is gotten from different sources. The different sources which supply, the sources which generate what we call electricity. One, is hydroelectric power. In short, we say HEP. H standing for hydro, E standing for electric, and P standing for power. This one is gotten from the running water. The running water which uh, runs some turbines, makes the some turbines to rotate, and then later they run a generator which produces what we call electric electricity. Number two, we have generators. In our school, if you know, we have a generator. When electricity is off, we always switch on the generators and we continue getting electricity as long as normal. Number three, we have what we call windmills. The windmills are devices which harness or they collect the wind energy and then makes the turbines of the windmills to rotate and then later those turbines make a generator to work and if the generator works it means there is production or generation of electric electricity. Number four, we have cells or batteries. A cell or a battery, you know at home we use torches. Although nowadays we have torches that are using electricity, but some, some time back or even right now, we have some torches, we have some radios, we have some devices, or our remotes at home, they use <coughs> batteries or cells. So those ones are also one of the sources of what we call electricity. Fifth, we have what we call the solar panels. They collect energy from the sun. They collect energy from the sun, they store it and then convert it into what we call electricity that is used later. 
<laughs> Next we have what we call a dynamo. A dynamo is a device that is used on bicycles. It has uh, magnets which are coiled, that have wires that are coiled, such that if the dynamo rotates, and then later it produces what we call electric electricity. Lastly, we have what we call biogas. Biogas is dotted from what? Uh, these things like uh, waste products produced by the animals like feces. We can talk about the, 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 the dust that are gotten from uh, what we eat. If you collect them somewhere, even it later, there is a way they convert, they are converted into what we call electricity. Thank you very much. Okay, apart from the sources of electricity, we like now to look at the types of electricity. How many are they? Two. That is current electricity and static electricity. Current is a form of electricity or a type of electricity which allows the flow of electrons. While static electricity does not involve the flow of electrons. Examples of current electricity, the things which produce current electricity are the ones I've mentioned up here. Hydroelectric power generators, the windmill, cells and batteries, solar panels, dynamo and batteries. All these, they generate what we call current electricity. But when we come to static electricity, as we had said earlier, it is caused by, the, it does not allow the flow of electricity. So instead, it <coughs> involves what we call friction. For example, let's talk about what we call lightning. What causes lightning? Lightning is caused by the friction of two oppositely charged what? Clouds. We have the add-on that we can get when you rub, rubbing a ruler or a pen on your hair. What will happen later? You can try it one time. If you take a ruler and then rub it on your hair for some very long time, and then you have some small pieces of papers, when you bring the ruler closer to those papers, what happens? They are going to be attracted. Alright? So, the forms of static electricity here are lightning and what is caused through what we call what? Friction, like rubbing a ruler against your hair or your body. Your body. Uh, come with me, we look at now a different thing which is called electric circuit. The electric circuit is a complete part of electricity which is formed by the following. These are the components which form up what we call electric circuit. Number one, we have a bulb, we have a switch, we have a dry cell or a battery, we have a wire. These are the simple uh, components of an electric what? Circuit. Now, they have their different functions, whereby the switch is the one which completes or breaks an electric circuit. When we say we complete an electric circuit, it means now the flow of electrons is moving on. But if you break it, it means you are switching it off. When you complete it, means you are switching it on. Ah, we have a wire, a wire which is the conductor. It is the conductor that allows the, the electrons to pass through. We have the batteries or a cell, which are what? the sources of electricity, as we had said earlier. We have a bulb. A bulb is the electric consume. consumer, is the one that consumes the electricity. So these are the few functions or the few parts of an electric circuit with their functions. And they can be shown using a very simple diagram here, whereby we have this is a switch, and if you look at this switch, this switch is not closed. This is called an open switch. We have this part here of an electric circuit, which is called a bulb. We have this part of electric circuit here, which is called batteries. And how many batteries do we have here? We have three. That is, these two, they represent one batch, one cell, two cells, three cells. In total, we call them batteries. The, <coughs> this one here, that is straight. This is called a wire. A wire. So 
this diagram here now shows you a simple electric circuit. Lastly, we have now the different symbols of, uh, of uh, electric uh, devices. Above is shown by that symbol. You can see it very clearly. We have a dry cell, which is made up of only one cell, if you look at this. The long one here stands for positive, and the short one there stands for negative. If you look at the cells, the cell has got a positive side and a negative side. Uh -huh. We have an open switch. You can look at it closely. It is not closed. Closed switch is this one here. So there is a difference between an open switch and a closed switch. When it is open like this, it means the circuit is not complete. But if it is closed, we mean that the circuit is complete. We have a diagram of a wire which is just made by a straight line. We have a battery. I want you to look at the difference between a battery and a dry cell. It is made up of one, but when we come here, it has more than one. We have the fuse. That is the, dial, the, the symbol of uh, a fuse. We have the resistor, that is the symbol for a resistor. Resistance, that is its symbol. Armature, that is the symbol of armature. Galvanometer, you can see it there clearly. Voltmeter, it is shown by that symbol. We have what we call direct current, shown by that symbol. And lastly, we have an alternating current shown by that symbol. So, my dear learners, for today, it was just kind of introduction on this new uh, competence called electrical energy. We have looked at what it, what it is and we have looked what <coughs> generates it. We have looked at the types of electricity. We have looked at what an electric circuit is and its components and we have seen their parts and the functions of an electric circuit, all right? Now, using the diagram, you have seen it clearly. Then we have finished with the symbols of an electric circuit, the symbols of an electrical devices. My dear learners, till next time when we meet again, we are going to look at now the types of electric circuit and their characteristics. Have a nice day, stay safe, and remain blessed. Thank you very much.